Great news for Buffalo Sabres fans. They needed a little bit of good news, and this will give them a huge shot in the arm. I'll be curious to see what direction they go. They, of course, did draft Rasmus Dahlin just a couple of years ago. Jack Eichel before that. They've got a center. They've got a great D. Dahlin really came on in the second half of the year and played up to his abilities after an incredibly slow start. So now they have the big decision, really. For me, it's it's kind of between Owen Power and Matthew Beneers. No disrespect to Blant, Brant Clark. He's right there as well. But uh, I am very, very much looking forward to the 2021 draft, as you see our NHL Network's top list. And those players right there, you cannot lose if you're drafting any one of these guys, in my opinion. Every one of them looks like they're going to be a bona fide player. Dylan Gunther did great things for the Oil Kings. William Eklund, of course, another fabulous Swedish player. Uh, Brant Clark, I always, I always think it's next to impossible to find great D. Hmm. And even though the trend has been that you get your top players in the National Hockey League high in the draft in terms of the goal scorers, whenever there's great D available, it always catches my eye. I'd be surprised if the Buffalo Sabres didn't go that direction. Okay. Owen Power when it's all said and done. But how about Seattle? Oh, I know. Well, what I thought was interesting, too, is that with the exception of Seattle and Anaheim flipping spots, the rest of the field filled out exactly, exactly as the odds predicted. So I guess there's something to be said for odds. Yes, and that does not happen very often. And the math was dramatically against it, but that's the way it worked out this year. That's fantastic at the end of the day. Um, I know Seattle will be over the moon. I've already received a couple texts from people on their staff. Buffalo is obviously thrilled. You could tell by Kevin Adams' reaction. Uh, and Anaheim, they're still going to get a really top-flight player. Right. We selected second in Tampa one year. You know what? It's just one of those things where you feel fortunate as an organization to be able to have a shot at drafting one of these kids because mm -hmm. there's some real quality hockey players and people in that top five group. How thrilling do you think it is for Ron Francis to get the second pick? Yes, we know it couldn't have been much lower. What, fifth? Yeah, the you know, could have gone. Ronnie's so humble. He probably never thought. He would never say that he hoped he moved up. That's just not his personality. Uh, but deep down, he's got to be pretty psyched right now. Even just moving up one more spot, he'll feel good about that. He can control his fate a little bit more. A lot of pressure on the scouts this year. It was a tough oh. year. And we're going to ask these guys, the teams are going to ask these guys to do the same amount of quality work that you've seen in the past when they've nailed so many of the great players at the top of the draft. Let's bring in Sam Cosentino now, who covers the draft extensively and certainly had his eyes on the results from tonight's draft lottery. Sam, who are some potential candidates that we really could see go first overall? Well, my guy is Owen Power, the six foot six, two hundred fifteen pound defenseman out of the University of Michigan. And here's a guy who Mel Pearson played in all situations, and you just don't see that as a freshman. He put up sixteen points during that time. And what is the telling mark for me and probably what's going to cement him as that top pick is the fact that he was all set to go back to Michigan and train with uh the the Maize and Blue during the summer, but instead Canada called and said, Hey, we want you to come and play for us at the Worlds. And so what happened was he said, yeah, okay. He plays three seconds in the first period, about eight minutes total in the first game, a 2 nothing loss to Latvia. And in their final preliminary round game against Finland, he's out there in a 2-2 game uh, in regulation in the final minute. So for me, you know, you look at Gerard Gallant, you look at all the NHL players available to them at that point, and Owen Power is out there in the final minute of a 2-2 game in a very crucial moment against Finland. So that is very telling to me. I, I was exchanging texts with Gerard Gallant this morning, and he said the poise and the confidence of this young man is really something I haven't seen in quite some time. Definitely a realistic comparison to a guy like Victor Hedman, it sounds like for you, Sam. But I think you nailed the first one. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Tell me who's number two on your list and why. And did you hear what I just said about who I think it will be for you? Yes, I did. Lots. Oh. I heard who you like. That's Matty Beneers, and that's his teammate at the University of Michigan. And what's interesting is when you look at Kent Johnson, who I also project to go in that top 10, never has an NCAA team 
had three players that on, on their current roster go in the first round. So we're looking at potential history here. And then, of course, you're talking about Luke Hughes attending there, and you look at Bortolo and Brisson. I mean, Mel Pearson has a, a wealth of riches there. But getting back to Matty Beneers, uh, I like what you said about him. I, he looks like a top two uh, center all day long. And what I like about him is that marriage of will and skill. Here's a hardworking guy who pays attention to details in all three zones. And the same thing as Owen Power, the USA Hockey uh, group says, you know what? Hey, why don't you come and play with us at the Worlds? And so he's chipped in a little. He hasn't played a ton there. But the fact that he was simply selected, I think, speaks volumes about what USA Hockey thinks about him. To me, this guy wears a letter sometime in the near future in the National Hockey League. All right, Sam, quickly, tell me what you think of later round draft picks. More valuable or less valuable with the chaos this year, the lack of viewings? I'm excited to be in 10, and after that, the phones are open. Let's start wheeling and dealing because of that chaos. And I think there are going to be some players that are picked inside of 20 from that 10 to 20 range that may very well be better players picked in the 30 to 40 range because of some of that uncertainty that you and Jamie were talking about a little bit earlier. So I'd be happy to pick up the phone, start wheeling and dealing anywhere after 10 because that's when the chaos begins, in my opinion. Bring on the chaos. We love it. All right. Thank you so much, Sam. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Take care.